Welcome to Fast Effect Double Speed Magic the Gathering. Here we have Kyle on Cephalid Breakfast, one of my favorite decks. This is actually my physical deck being borrowed uh, versus Enry on Reanimator. And he has a turn one Thoughtseize, which is dangerous versus any combo deck. We've got a Stoneforge Mystic, Aether Vial, Nomad in Core. The top of the deck bails Kyle out. He could still have a turn two win, left with both Aether Vial and Nomads. He will go with the Vial. That is a bit more of a decision than it looks like. It is possible that it's better to play the Nomad and then have the Brainstorm potential for Aether Vial, throwing that card back. If you do draw a Brainstorm, doesn't provide too much utility in this matchup. End of turn in Tomb. And going to be Gristlebrand. Now, Elish Norn cannot be beaten without removing it. So that is also a consideration in this matchup. If Henry has access to the roided up plague engineer that is Elish Norn. The original, well, not the original, I guess there was Krovax and some other cards prior to Elish Norn, but I mean, he wears it best. Minus two, minus two to your opponent's creatures, plus two, plus two to all of yours. Here's Exhum. Stoneforge comes back. Battle trigger grabs batter skull. Cauldra complete has not been added to this list yet. There are definitely some considerations with Modern Horizons too. Also, Caracas could be worthwhile in this build now, given the presence of both Ragavan. Just the general amount of legends in the format. Unmask. These Force of Will and Batter Skull. And we could see a Cephalid at any point here. Probably Brainstorm. Best card that you could draw after the Cephalid is it would give you multiple draws towards the brain uh, toward the Cephalid. Faithless looting. Graveyard order slightly inaccurate. Technically, Faithless Looting goes to the graveyard as it resolves. We see Children of Corliss and Chancellor in the bin. Off the Faithless Looting. This is a Tinfins build rather than just traditional reanimator. And here we see Animate Dead bringing back children. That is going to give. Bristlebrand, just so much more to work with. That would indicate this probably doesn't have access to Elish Norn. That is not totally standard. Tinfins tends to be more in on the combo than having a whole range of potential reanimation targets. You don't really need a toolbox when you've gone the extra step of putting in Children of Corliss and really steered directly into that life gain, life loss aspect of the deck. It's pretty much always going to be the best thing you can be doing. So it looks like he's getting ready to go to discard. Wow. Far from ideal. Bristlebrand, a whole bunch of other reanimation targets. Just out of mana. Some dark rituals and lotus petals were needed there to keep the ball rolling, and instead, 
See what Kyle can do. Will the top of the deck bail him out? If he passes back, it is likely over. A mother of runes. Not where you want to be. Though, you know what? With a Narcomoeba, that could get <laughs> that could get comical if if Henry whiffs one more time with a draw seven. A flyer gets in the way of this gristle brand, then Mother of Runes will make it so no life is gained as the two clash. Gristle brand lifelink does require it doing damage, and Mother of Runes would prevent all damage from a black source to some hypothetical flyer, such as Raisin Borrower or Narcomoeba. Here we go. Dark Ritual, Dark Ritual, Triple Dark Ritual. The Animate. Grabbing Children. Gonna gain the life back. Interested to see the final win condition here if it's a tendrils or what it's going to be. Another reanimate would be probably tendrils based off of what we're seeing. A whole bunch of free spells here unmask, chrome mox. Got our Tendrils of Agony, the Strixhaven Foil. And Cephalid Breakfast was live there, despite Tinfins just having pretty much unchecked rain, uh, free rain to just go wild, draw tons and tons of cards, but wasn't able to completely close the door, which is kind of scary for, for Reanimator. I mean, that you really... You want to be in a situation where you can at least prevent your opponent from winning on the next turn after you play your discard spells. Most decks do need a couple of different cards. You know, like a show-and-tell deck, for example. You're going to need show-and-tell and some things to put in off of it. Then Omniscience, then a creature to cast, or a gristle brand and draw some cards. At least a couple of cards is kind of... kind of unsettling when you're playing against Zephyr Breakfast to the point where a lot of Decks will actually over sideboard against it. I've seen a lot of people bringing in tons of graveyard hate and then just getting completely rolled by the Stoneforge package. Remember, it does have counter spells, so there's a balance of trying to disrupt them. You steer too hard into it, and then your deck is not going to be able to play past even a single Force of Will. Chancellor. With that first trigger. Potential force of will. Not really as good on the draw. You can see force of will pay the one. The most common situation here. Much, much better on the play. How about a dark ritual? That would be a thing to force a will. Or days. Days actually would have been fantastic there. Nope, this is looking like it's going to be a pretty quick game. Entomb. Oh, is Kyle just absolutely got the read here? He does. Oh, look at this. Force of Will on the Entomb. Just brass balls. That is the Dark Ritual... Tends to be the card that people will force of will there. If your opponent has Thought Seize and Tomb, you are just dead in the water. Kyle with the Reed, and it pays off as his Force of Will trades for the Dark Ritual and the Entomb. Similar lines can be Collective Brutality Escalated.
and then following up with the reanimate. I mean, there's so many ways that that dark ritual can be a complete blowout. And there are those times where you can absolutely catch them. As we just saw, the toughest thing now for Henri is going to be getting a creature into the bin. He's got the exhume. The Cabal Therapy. In the graveyard. Can be flashed back at some point. Ponder. Really thinking this one through. And another Aether Vial. Which I don't love here. Second Aether Vial could be better off getting shuffled in with a Brainstorm. Tough to say without knowing Kyle's hand. That brainstorm, potentially very high value. Cephalid Breakfast, one of the one of the decks that I've played where brainstorm is like the most crucial. And Henri gonna thought sees himself. He's got the exhume. Fields are down, the cards are being drawn. It is very likely over. Getting to thoughts he's himself to get the fatty into the bin. And now drawing fourteen cards. Exhume so strong in, in this Tin Fins build. Just aren't going to care what your opponent's getting back as you are just winning the game on the spot, similar to the World Gorger Dragon builds. There's just something to be said for not needing to pass the turn. I mean, you can create a commanding board presence, but it is much better to just actually end it, particularly when you're talking about the end of a round. You things more frustrating in tournament magic than having the game wrapped up and needing to end in a draw. Oh, wow. Kyle with all the goods. He's got the Stone Forge and the Cephalid. That is actually enough to get the job done. Looks like Iona's going to be coming back. Oh, no, Elishnorn. There we go. Elishnorn, definitely the scarier card. Cephalid comes in and dies immediately. Bristlebrand, even bigger of a threat now, gaining even more life. And it's just Brazen Borrower at this point. It'll likely be over. I mean pretty much over yeah polluted delta drawn for turn again likely needing to be kept in hand to have a brainstorm interact everything turning sideways one more swing it's pretty much just brazen borrower the only card that would Give any chance a single card we knew was Stoneforge. Now anime Iona. Look at these three legendary creatures teaming up. That is going to do it. As Reanimator takes down Cephalid Breakfast.